All right, so we're picking immediately up from the last chapter from when Yagyu just straight up low diffed William Adams. And as he's walking away, we're seeing the reaction from multiple people, especially from Kojiro and Hosuin. But as he's walking away towards Nobutada, he says to Yagyu, in the end, you delivered a crushing defeat, hmm? This is but one victory, the first step toward an era of peace through your blade and my bloodline. And clearly Yagyu doesn't look the least bit exhausted. He even humbles himself by saying there's still more for him to train. But then we're seeing Takuanbo again, and it looks like they're both apparently on really friendly terms here and after Takuan comments how he could have ended that fight so much sooner he then warns Yagyu about letting this demon that's inside him from taking over but then Yagyu just says to him you don't understand if it meant mastering the sword I would gladly become a demon and this causes Takuan to hit him on the head he just says to him idiot and lose one of my friends in the process like hell I'd let that stand so I'm not really sure what to take away from this right because on the one hand we're seeing Yagyu's demon like personality contrast to his friendly like behavior towards Takuan, but I'm not sure, maybe this is some kind of foreshadowing towards Yagyu's tragic death in the later rounds, who knows? And with the fight coming to a finish, we're seeing the boat that they were all on is heading back to Ozaka Castle for the next match. But then we're cutting to this next scene between two of Oda's retainers, Hashiba and Shibata. And going all the way back to chapter 1, I think we've seen Hashiba on occasion ever since then, but it was actually Shibata who spoke out against Oda and got headshot by that steel fan. And it's been implied he didn't really die since we saw Shibata listed as one of the sponsors in Tenkaichi when it was revealed at the end of chapter 1, but he obviously looks entirely different here. And despite how buddy-buddy Hashiba's trying to act with him here, Shibata's just denying all of his advances, right? He even says to him, there's no man I despise in this world more than you. But then he says something very curious here. He says, and I'll make certain this debt I've incurred from your lapdog is paid back to you in full. And even by the end of this chapter, it's not specified what this debt really is, but if I had to guess, I'm assuming it's the cost it took for him to to repair his right eye because when we finally get a good look at him it's like he's repaired the injury he got after losing his eye and mind you it was actually Hino who threw the steel fan so I'm assuming it's Hino who he's referring to here as Hashiba's lapdog so then we're cutting over to Mori he's starting to announce the start to round four when we see the setting for the next match the twin dragon cage and it's exactly what it sounds like this massive steel cage that's decorated with these two dragon statues fixed on the top of it and as we're seeing everyone's reaction to this we're then cutting over to Itosai who says to himself here, he says, I'm not fond of being spoiled on my opponents before I fight them, but this is the exception. But then going over to Kojiro and Jisai, Jisai notices Itosai's here to watch the fight as well, and for anyone who doesn't know, I think Itosai and Kojiro were both students of Jisai at some point in Japanese history. Of course, one of the manga's biggest selling points is about this story not being history as we know it, but I'm just gonna assume that's why Jisai makes this comment here about seeing Ito. Maybe there was some sort of fallout between them as master and student. But then Kojiro points out that it's not just Ito who's come to watch the match, we're then seeing a couple other fighters from before make an appearance, like Toko and Hayashizaki. But then Kojiro points over to Musashi, and we get this really funny moment between him and his dad here. We see him pulling Musashi by the ear, forcing him to come over and watch this upcoming fight. But then we're seeing a very mysterious someone interrupt them. She says, dear oh dear, so you're here with your daddy boy. And after some smack talk from Musashi, we find out this is of course Kojiro, who's also come to watch the fight. She says, Kotaro's gonna get a taste of this little old man. They all hail as the sword saint. And even though this chapter is mostly just setting the stage, I have to admit, it really did its job at building the hype, especially for someone like Kamizumi, who I didn't know what to expect. So as Mori's introducing Kamizumi, he says something really interesting here in his announcement. He says, as both the founder of Shingaki Ryu and the great grandmaster of Yagi Munanori and Hozuin Inshun. So not only is Kamizumi this great grandmaster of two of the fighters in Tenkaichi, we can't forget that one of his students has already won his fight, so I'm just gonna say it's gonna be especially and unbelievably surprising if he loses just because of this fact alone. But then we finally see him make his entrance, the sword say Kamizumi Isenokami no Butsuna. But apparently he's just sleep talking this whole time, he doesn't even know that it's his turn to fight yet. But as Mori realizes this, one of Kamizumi's escorts says to him, worry not young man, bring any ordinary martial artist before him and he'd soundly defeat them even in his sleep. If you wish to see how sensei fights while awake however I ask that you bring him one who is truly strong and apparently this man talking is some other high profile martial artist who's also a student under Kamizumi and as we're seeing everyone's reaction to this we see Ito start to get overly impatient he says maybe I shouldn't have come at all now I want to fight and I hate being forced to wait but then Yagyu has something to say he says you're a monstrous old man perhaps and this match will be able to see your true form and as someone who was at one point a student under Kamizumi again it's just 
just getting really harder to believe he's gonna somehow lose this, especially if his true form is so strong it's something Yagyu can respect. And right when Mori's about to introduce his opponent, he thinks to himself, I'm not sure if he's the sword saint or the sword slut, but he's the god of the sword that's for sure. Only one with an extraordinary physique gifted to him by the gods would be worthy to face him, in other words, him. And this whole scene we get here with Mori is my favorite moment throughout this whole chapter when he says, does the strongest man in the world wield any weapons? Is the strongest man in the world clad in any armor? Nay. And then we finally see him make his entrance the god of might in the flesh, Hino Choko. And as he's being walked out here with Hashiba, he says, I, Hideyoshi, and Choko will give our all to liven up the festivities. And seeing him now after being headshot by that steel fan in chapter 1, Shibata just looks at Hino now while holding the right side of his face. But immediately, once Hino takes the first step towards Kamizumi, we see him just wake up instantly and in shock. And after he finally gets up, he just looks at Hino and says, so you're my playmate boy. And without looking at him with his mask off, he still tries to take a good look at him and then says to him, you look like a rather nice kid. But then staring each other down, he then says, by the way, are you human boy? And this page here just looks amazing, the way Hino with his mask on doesn't even look human, and the way Kamizumi doesn't even look like an old man from behind, I'd say he looks rather feminine. And then we're cutting over to Shibata, he asks Marume if he actually has a chance here against Hino, and he just says to him, Sensei could not possibly lose. However, this is the first time I have ever seen him awaken from having a man simply stand before him. And then Kamizumi just calmly says to him, So you're Choko-chan, now then, let's go play in that metal basket over there. And coming to the end of the chapter, Hino's just stuttering until he finally just says kill. So again, even though this chapter was mostly just setting the stage here, this is the kind of hype the story needed after round 3, so I think I speak for the majority when I say we're expecting a lot here. But that's gonna be the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. For what it's worth, I think this was a really fun chapter, and considering the spoilers for chapter 18, I'm hopeful this fight can be just what most of us are expecting. But before I end the video, I just want to give a very special thanks to the channel's patrons, Iron and Justin. Thank you so much for your support, and for anyone wondering, I just recently opened up a Patreon where if you're interested, you can also sign up too and get into this monthly q and I'll be doing here now on the channel. I should be posting the first one up sometime at the start of July, so from now until the end of June, feel free to consider joining. You'd also be helping me out a lot here in a massive way and get a special shout out like this in every single video. The link will be in the description below or you could just search it yourself at patreon.com slash izanami. But other than that guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, feel free to comment down below what your thoughts are, anything you agreed or disagreed with. And if you're interested in more Tenkaichi, then make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing more here on the channel like always. And yeah, have a great day.